Alright, we're still on bracketing, but I'm moving down the timeline to show you the surgical precision that Luke is using in tracking Matthew. Matthew's down here. This is Matthew 24. We're now at verse 19. Uai. Gastri. Those are the keywords. Woe to women who are pregnant. That starts here in Luke. In Luke 21:23, and the syllable that the ui occupies, it's two syllables. It's five syllable 573 and syllable 574, which corresponds to 603 and 604. Because remember, these this is years after his death in both timelines. Okay, he's talking two months before he dies. And what we're doing is tracking to show how when Matthew here, obviously quoting, I mean Luke, obviously quoting Matthew. I don't know why the scholars have any doubt about Matthew being the first gospel. Um, Uai, Tais, and Gastri, Gastri, Ekusais. Okay, same words, exact words, Matthew quoting, Matthew being quoted. Now the reason why is because Luke is being written 28 years later. He's expecting the reader to have memorized Matthew, which is why he's so creative about the placement of his text. It's called interpretative quoting. It means that when you change a known quotation, you're making a point. Like if I say windows, but I spell it D-O-Z-E at the end, I'm making a play on something wrong with the operating system by Microsoft called Windows. It's kind of like that. Okay, like when we make funny names, satirical names out of Donald Trump, like Ding Dong Trump. Everybody knows what the original is, and so when you make the change, you're making a point. That's exactly what interpretative quoting is about, and that's what Luke is doing here. He's doing it throughout his gospel, and just so that the reader can be sure where he's at, because he's doing that, he occasionally will quote the exact text so that you can follow along. Now, the interpretation here with the meter is part of the bracketing. Because, see, this is 572. So this syllable, this ui, is 573 and 574. Okay? And those are years after Christ's death. He's tracking using the same dating system that Matthew used. So you track by syllable. And in using that same dating system then, it's like, oh, what? wait a minute. Right here, the ui here in Matthew that he's quoting is not occurring at the same syllable. See, this is 572 at end. So 573 and 574 are the syllable counts there, but here, verse 18, um, had ended at 560. So this is 561 and 562. So again, Luke is bracketing the text, and there's this time, instead of a one-year spread, you have a 10-year spread. Because this is 593 and 590, uh, 573 and 574 in syllable counts. And this is 561 and 562. So it's a little over 10 years. 573 minus 561 is 12 years apart. So whatever applied to non-Christians about a deadline is occurring 10 years, 12 years earlier here. And 12, of course, is the number of Israel. Almost it's a meter that's used almost throughout the Bible. Okay, so Jews have an earlier earlier warning. Twelve years prior, the Jews, it's like, woe to you if you're still there or you come back, because they do. In history, this is what happens. If you come back to Jerusalem, at 561, you're going to be groaning. And God help you if you're a pregnant woman in those days. Okay? 
for the Christian, it's a similar problem because any real Christian, and I don't mean unsaved, I mean, I don't mean saved versus unsaved, I mean spiritually growing versus, you know, um, carnal, okay? For the Christian, it's a little bit later. It's 573 rather than 561. And again, you have to add 30 to that to convert to A.D. So if we convert to A.D., here we're looking at 602 is the end here, 603, 604 A.D. for the Christian. But back here, we're looking at 590 because it's 560 plus 30. So 591 and 592. Okay? So it's 12 years prior. The Jews, you know, you didn't listen. You still ended up there. Now you're waiting for your next exit window. And here it is. For the Jews, it's 591 and 2. For the Christians, it's, it's 12 years later. Okay? And why is that important? Well, when you look at history, you find out. What basically happens, you remember we had our first morning up here? And then you had to go to the mountains, okay? And that was by that was by this was the end of this was 520 A.D. Okay? Then you had another 16 years. Then you had another 16 years, and you better go to the mountains by this point. Now, if you didn't, or if you came back, then it's like, well, you know, it's not going to stay nice. If you come back and you think, oh, everything's okay, it's not going to be okay. You should just leave and not come back. But if you came back, then there's this extra little warning. Okay? Now, what basically happens is from the time that that stupid church gets started to be built upon the Holy of Holies, the so-called Church of St. Mary, until the guy, and then it, it's partially built, and then it just sits there, and then Justinian comes into power, okay, um, right about, right here. Justinian comes into power here, and he wants to finish the building, okay. As a result of Justinian coming into power, there is a, a concentrated effort first to get rid of the Jews, and then to get rid of Christians who disagree, because he's the guy who really wanted to, you know, how do you want to call it, uh, evangelize everybody, all right? As a result of that, he also wants to expand, and under Justinian, by 555 A.D., okay, which is, remember, we've got down to here, by 555 A.D., which is right here, when you're supposed to go to your mountain. Now, four years after that deadline, that's when he ends up taking the empire to its largest extent in wars with Persia. And from that time on, Persia fights back. And all during this time, Persia sometimes controls the territory and sometimes it's the Byzantines. When Persia controls the territory, it's friendly to the Jews. When it doesn't control the territory, it's not. When it's friendly to the Jews, it's friendly to the Christians, too, because they really don't care. They just want your money. Okay, just pay us, and we'll leave you alone. Okay? But, starting around 604 for the Christians, and about 591, or five, yeah, 591 for the Jews, the Byzantines start gaining, start, like, winning. Okay? And that means that the Christians and the Jews um, get more persecuted. It's a back and forth thing that, that continues to happen until um, basically 630. And that's where we're going to pick up in the next increment.